Welcome back to another video. My name is Carl Gosling. I'm sure you know that by now. And today we're going to be talking about the G920 from Logitech again. Just a quick video to show you how to set it up uh, in Assetto Corsa. Uh, I did one for Dirt Rally, um, you know, a few days ago. And um, I'm going to work my way through some of the more popular sims and games and just show people how, at least for me, I've got the best out of this entry level wheel. Um, because it is a half decent little wheel for the money and, uh, and it's definitely worth you know getting one as a starting point if, if that's where about your budget is. Um, I've also got a full review if you want to check that out as well. So um, let's, uh, let's get the screen capture software fired up first of all and, um, and then I'll take you through all the settings and, uh, and show you everything. So I'm just using the uh, NVIDIA screen capture software. That seems to work well enough which is Alt and F9, and we should be, yeah, recording started, awesome. So the first thing you're gonna see here is a G920 control panel. These are your drivers, you'll have them installed already. Now, this is gonna be really, really quick because you basically don't do anything in here at all. If you've got the G29 version on the PlayStation, you probably don't even have this, but it's always good just to check on the PC that your settings are the default settings. Um, 50, 900, tick the box and set it in spring 10%. You only dick around with those if you're trying to make this work with older games. So, so of course is not an older game um, or competition only, so that's fine, we'll leave that as it is. And the same with the pedal sensitivity, um, everything should be as default. So, then we load into the game itself and we just go main menu, we go settings and we go controls. Now, I've already set mine up obviously, so some of this you won't necessarily see exactly the same, but it's close enough. Middle of the screen at the top, start configuration wizard. I'm not gonna go through this because it's pretty self-explanatory. You just do what it tells you to on the screen and that will calibrate your wheel and your pedals. And you it's worth doing because for whatever reason, the brake pedal and the accelerator pedal, I think, are actually inversed. So if you don't do this, when your foot's all the way off the accelerator, the game thinks it's all the way on and vice versa and the same for the brake pedal. So it's worth doing that just so it auto corrects those axes. Um, how do I escape out of this? Back, okay. So you've gone through that, you've done that, you've set up your pedals, you've set up your, your paddles, you've calibrated the wheel, and you've set your shifter, if you've got the H pattern shifter as well. Now, one of the things you'll notice when this happens, or after this happens, sorry, is that when you look at steering axis degrees of rotation, mine says 900, yours is actually gonna say something like 863 or some weird number like that. I don't know why it calibrates to that, it just does. The wheel is a 900 degree wheel, and it reports as such in all other games. So manually set that to 900, click on the slider and drag it, or just click on the slider, and then you can use your, your cursor keys up and down look, to go one degree at a time. Aside from that, everything else is fine. You can see here I've got invert, on the throttle and the brake, oh, and the clutch ticks. So yeah, all three of them are around the wrong way. Um, but that's all pretty simple. Handbrake, you can assign to whatever you want. You know, your shifter, obviously, you'll have already set that up as well, so that should all be fine. Gear shift up and down will be the paddles, which you will also have done. Uh, secondary, should, should you want to set up any of these for buttons on the wheel, by all means do so. I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this video. Click on it, press the button you want, done. Um, that's entirely up to you. So, the force feedback settings, which are the things we're really here to talk about. You click advanced. It's gonna go down and one at a time. So gain is your overall force feedback strength. If you have that set on 100%, even with this little Logitech G920, which isn't the strongest wheel in the world, it's too heavy. At least, I think it's too heavy. So 65% seems to be the sweet spot for me. That gives me plenty of fidelity, plenty of force feedback to be able to tell what's going on with the road when I lose traction and understeer and, and what have you, but it's not so heavy that it just feels you know cumbersome the entire time. So 65% is what I have that on. The next one down you can see is filter and that's on zero. Now, that filters out the force feedback spikes. It adds a smoothing effect. I personally don't want a smoothing effect. I want to feel exactly what's happening to my wheels through my steering wheel. You know, when you're out in real life driving your car, you're directly connected to your steering 
your, as the steering wheels, as in the wheels that steer your car, through your steering wheel inside. Uh, unless, of course, you've got electric power steering, in which case you haven't, uh, you're not connected, sorry. And a lot of people don't like electric power steering for that very reason. You're disconnected from the wheels. It, it feels more like you're playing a computer game, to be honest. So I don't want any spikes filtered out. You know, if I hit a, a barrier or a curb or clip a car, I want a, a, a full jolt through the steering wheel to, to let me know I've done it and, and reflect what's happening, you know, on the screen in front of me. So filter at zero, minimum force. Now, minimum force. Each force feedback steering wheel, whether it be Logitech, Thrustmaster, Fanatic, whatever, um, requires a certain amount of force to rotate itself. It has a rotating mass. The steering wheel has weight, the motor has friction, um, and it requires a certain amount of force just to move that. Now, if, um, if you leave the minimum force at zero, that means the, in, the, in the game, say for example, you're driving down a straight where there's not much in the way of force feedback going on, nice level road down the straight in the middle of the road. The steering wheel is going to feel almost too light in some instances because it would have scaled the force feedback down to, you know, maybe one or two percent. But let's say just to move the weight of the wheel itself against the friction of the motor and the components, it requires, say, 10 percent. Um, strength from the motor just to move it. So you're below that threshold, which means the game might be varying between you know, zero and 10% and you won't actually feel any difference. So you'll be missing out on some detail there. So um, that I'm, I'm gonna set that about 10% on this wheel. Now, this is just from experience, of course. You'll know if you've got it too high because if you're, say, just going down a straight, second gear, 20 mile an hour, you let go of the steering wheel, it will oscillate a little bit, left to right, left to right, left to right, all on its own. And what's happening there is, because you've set the minimum force too high, um, it's, it's sending a signal to the motor. Let's say I put that all the way up to 30%. In fact, if I did it at 30%, you'd see this wobble here. Um, but there's no need for me to demonstrate it. I can demonstrate it like this, look. So yeah, and you can try it for yourself. Put it at 30% in second gear, cruise along, and just just let go of the wheel and you'll see it just oscillate left to right all of its own accord. That's because the minimum force is greater than what is required to overcome the weight of the steering wheel and the internal components. So what you could do is you could just turn it up to 30 and you could gradually bring it back down 5% at a time until that oscillation goes. Once you've done that, you've found the sweet spot between the minimum force required to move the wheel and its components. Um, and, uh, or the, the threshold, sorry, that's, that's, that's pretty much where you want it to be. Um, you don't want it to be too strong so it's oscillating, you don't want it to be not enough so that you've got an area of force feedback where you're not actually feeling anything. So 10% um, I find to be quite reasonable on, the, on, on this, for me at least, anyway. Um, okay, so again, you can play with it yourself. If it oscillates, bring it down. If it doesn't oscillate, bring it up and, and, you know, until you find a sweet spot. Anyway, next one along, curb effects. This is a vibration effect. There is a vibration motor in here, and when you run over a curb in the game, you will get a nice vibration through the steering wheel. Just like when you run over a curb or a rumble strip, sorry, yeah, if you run over a curb in real life, you'll probably buckle a wheel and blow a tire. If you run over a rumble strip in real life, you get that sort of vibration through your wheel. So that's what curb effects does. I find 70% to be about the sweet spot for me. It's not too aggressive, um, but it's there enough for me to notice. I want, when I run over a curb on a, on a racetrack, I want to feel that juddering through my steering wheel. Some people will tell you to turn that to zero, but then you know, you're missing out on some feedback in the form of vibration that tells you what's going on in the game. You, know? you, might, not, you might not see the your horizon line bouncing up and down, but you'll feel it through the steering wheel that you're on the curb. So, I find it useful. So yeah, 70% is about where I have that. Uh, the next one, road effects. Again, I've read of people saying to put this down to zero as well. And again, you know, not to insult people, I think that's just stupid because road effects are your lumps, your bumps, your undulations. Now on a smooth racetrack, there aren't gonna be that many of those. Um, but to test this out, if you wanna just run off onto the grass, you'll feel, again, this is a vibration motor uh, effect as well as a bit of force feedback through the wheel. So you'll get your, your lumps and bumps coming as, you, as you're going over the grass. 
you know, in the, in the lumpy areas. Now, if you're on, a, on a, a bumpy track that does undulate quite a lot, you might even feel the odd lump and bump then. And again, I personally want that. What's the point in having a force feedback steering wheel with vibration motors if you then turn all those effects off? Um, it just seems a bit weird to me. But yeah, that's what road effect is. Your lumps, your bumps, potholes, if you had a pothole, for example, that would all be your road effect. So I have that at 100%. With this steering wheel, 100%, it's not overpowering at all. It, it's, it's still a very subtle effect. Um, maybe on other steering wheels that have stronger vibration motors, you would need to turn that down a little bit because it might be too much. But on this one, 100% seems to give me um, the perfect balance with that and the curb effects of what's going on underneath my wheels. You know, it's not force feedback as in when you corner hard and the weight of the wheel loads up, that's force feedback through the physics of the game. This is just an effect through the vibration motors primarily to let you know what's going on under the wheels if you're on a rough surface, you know, or if you're on a smooth surface, there'd be nothing. Now the next two, slip effects and ABS effects, these are literally um, just vibration motor effects again. Slip effect means you will get a vibration similar to what you get when you go over a curb if you lock up the wheels, so if you're sliding, or if you wheel spin. Um, and so literally if you do a massive wheel spin off the line, your, your wheel will vibrate just like you're going over the curb. You can't really tell the difference. It's exactly the same type of vibration. Uh, and if you lock up the wheels, if you've got your ABS turned off in the car and you lock up the wheels, um, as you're sliding, you'll get that same vibration again. Again, it's just a vibration motor effect. And that's, that's the slip. And ABS effects, it does exactly the same thing, but it does it when the ABS cuts in, in the game. So again, just a vibration. Um, so if you were to have slip effects and ABS effects on, you're just going to end up getting a whole lot of vibrations um, like a lot of the time. So you're going to brake hard, your ABS will kick in, you're going to get a little bit of vibration because you're still in between. The way ABS works, it, it shuts the brakes on and off, on and off really, really quickly. You do still lock the wheels for a fraction of a second. Um, you'll still hear a slight squeal from the tyres. So with the ABS effects on, the slip effects on, when you brake really hard, you're going to get a reasonable vibration. You might like it. Um, or maybe you just want the ABS, or maybe you don't want the ABS and you just want the slip effect. So when you're locking the wheels up, when you're sliding, you know, maybe you've gone hammering down into a corner and you've locked up, you're anchored up real hard and you're like, fuck me, and you're sliding and you're understeering, that steering wheel will vibrate to let you know. And as soon as you get traction again, you know, you, you, as soon as you ease off the brake pedal to, to get the wheels turning and gain traction again, the effect fades away. So it, it does work, but it's definitely down to personal preference as to whether you you have those effects on or not. But yeah, let's just summarize those again. Gain at 65, overall strength. Filter filters out the spikes, I don't like that. Minimum force, experiment until you hit oscillation and back off 5% of the time until you find the sweet spot. Curb effects, little vibration from the motor when you go over the curbs. Road effects gives you all the detail that's in the road, your lumps, your bumps, your rough surfaces, etc. Slip effects, wheel lock and wheel spin. ABS literally when the ABS kicks in. That's what they all are. Enhanced understeer effect will make the steering wheel go even lighter when you're understeering. Personally, I don't find it necessary. It's quite apparent when you're turning into a corner and you start to understeer, the wheel goes noticeably lighter anyway. You don't need any extra things to boost that, in my opinion, with this wheel. Half the force feedback update rate. Um, I've not actually experimented with that because I haven't found it I haven't found it necessary, but I'm going to take a guess that it literally does what it says on the tin, which is half the force feedback update rate. So the data that's sent to the wheel, it will half the speed at which it transmits that data. I don't see why you'd want to do that. If anything, you want it as quick as possible. You don't want any delays or any lag. You want the, the steering wheel here to reflect what's going on in the game you know, as you're playing. So I've never even bothered ticking that to try it out. I don't see any point. Um, Maybe I'm wrong, who knows. And then your steering settings on the right, gamma filter speed sensitivity and pedal settings. I leave them all at default. Um, I've had no reason to play with them. So this is my personal settings and my, my experience with how to get the best out of the G920 or G29. I always try and get whatever wheel and wheel base I'm using to feel as much like driving you know, my real car in real life. 
So that's, for me, this is as close to it can get within the limitations of the hardware itself. Um, so I hope this helps a few people. Um, I'm a new channel. If you like what I'm doing, throw us a sub. That'd be amazing. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy.